VS Code is the tool set we use to build all applications for the Mac and iOS. And Xcode is in fact one of the most popular pro apps on our platform. The last version was downloaded 14 million times. It's unbelievable. Now, of course, central to Xcode is the language we use to develop our apps, Objective-C. Now, Objective-C has served us so well for 20 years. We absolutely love it. But we had to ask ourselves the question, what would it be like if we had Objective-C without the baggage of C? We did more than think about it. We have a new programming language. The language is called Swift, and it totally rules. Swift is fast, it is modern, it is designed for safety, and it enables a level of interactivity and development that you've never seen on the platform. When it comes to speed, Swift is great. Compare Python, a popular scripting language, with Objective-C when it comes to something like, let's say, complex object sort. Objective-C is a lot faster, but Swift is faster still. And take something like RC4 encryption, extremely com computationally intensive. Uh, Python gets utterly crushed in this particular benchmark. An objective, but look at Swift. Now, Swift is also modern with features like closures, generics, type inference, multiple re return types, and namespaces. <laughs> people at home are going, what in the heck are these guys talking about? With Swift, you're able to reduce a common pattern that you might see in your Objective-C code like this and reduce it to something as simple as this. And Swift defines away large classes of common programming errors. They just aren't possible. Now, Swift is completely native to Cocoa and Cocoa Touch. It's built with the same LLVM compiler as Objective-C using the same optimizer and auto vectorizer, and it has the same arc memory management model and the same runtime, which means that your Swift code can fit right alongside your Objective-C and your C code in the same application. Now, Swift also enables a level of dynamism and interactivity in development that we've never seen before with a feature we call Playgrounds. To demonstrate Swift and Playgrounds in action, I'd like to bring to the stage Chris Latner. Come on up, Chris. Thank you, Craig. I am thrilled to be here and to be the first person to give you a taste of Swift. Let me show you how fun and interactive it is to write Swift code. This is a Swift playground. As I start typing, I get an immediate response. It is actually running my code as I type it and displaying the result in the sidebar to the right. Of course, Swift uses type inference and has powerful string processing capabilities which make it as easy to use as a scripting language without sacrificing any performance. Swift was designed from the ground up for Cocoa and Cocoa Touch, so of course I have their full power at my fingertips. Now I can build anything with Swift, from a social media application all the way up to a high-performance 3D game using Metal. But today, to keep it simple, I think I'll write a simple casual 2D game. Let's start by using NS Image. Let's start by uh, using NS Image to load a resource. As you can see here, I've uh, the playground sees I've loaded an image. I can even see it right here from within Xcode. Now Swift is loaded with high-end features like generics that allow me to get a lot done with very little code. 
Here you can see I'm using an array of strings and using the functional map algorithm to apply a closure to every element, which allows me to load an entire list of images, all with a simple line of code. Now, all these resources are part of this game that I'm working on, and one piece that I'm, I still need to finish up is the flight path for the blimp that we have. Now, this is a simple loop that computes the position for the blimp over time as my game plays. And in addition to seeing individual values, Swift Playgrounds even allow me to visualize the entire history of a value over time as my application runs. And so now I can immediately see that this equation will cause my blimp to slowly sink as the scene plays out. But I think I can do better, and that's not exactly what I'm looking for. So I can change the code, and I get an immediate response. Simply by changing the equation, the blimp will now rise and fall as the scene plays out, which is a lot more of what I'm looking for. So now that we have this the way we want, we can take this and copy it, and let's go to the game that I'm working on right here. Now this is a playground just like before, but here I have a game in the code written using SpriteKit. Now you can see our blimp going left and right straight across the scene, and I can try out the flight path that we just developed simply by pacing it in and getting the immediate feedback I'm looking for. Now the blimp is rising and falling just like I want it. Because Swift enables such powerful interactive and dynamic programming experiences it makes it really easy to try out new things. And just by adding a few lines of code, I can enable sprite kits per pixel collisions, field forces, and lighting effects, getting a, a much more interesting result. Now, Swift Playgrounds even give you full power over time. With this timeline at the bottom of the screen, I can go forwards and backwards through the execution of my game, so I can really see those effects in action. I can see the balloons interacting with each other and with the blimp, just like that. Playgrounds give me unprecedented power to see my app in detail and give me full control when I want to refine and polish my application. But of course, Swift works great with Xcode and runs great on iOS. So let's now jump and see what the finished product looks like. go. And this is the game that we just built. Looks pretty great. Now, as uh, Craig told you earlier, we've also brought SceneKit to iOS. With SceneKit, it's super easy to build a, a 3D version of our game. And that's just a quick taste and quick look at Swift. I think you guys are going to absolutely love it.